Coming up on today's episode of the Airborne Unlimited. First feather flight of VSS Unity completed. More rumors fly around DJI Spark unveiling. And Ericsson successfully emerges from Chapter 11. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's May 4th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. VSS Unity, the suborbital spacecraft that Virgin Galactic hopes will one day carry tourists to the fringe of space, reached a major milestone Monday with the successful completion of its first feather flight. Virgin Galactic posted on its blog that the feather system was tested extensively on the ground before the flight test was conducted. The company said in the post, Full analysis of the data from today's flight will, as always, take time, but initial reports from pilots from Mission Control are extremely encouraging. The SS Unity was piloted by Mark Stuckey and Mike Masucci, with pilots Nicola Pasili and CJ Sturko, as well as flight test engineer Dustin Mosher and White Knight 2. The test flight was the fourth glide flight and eighth flight overall of the VSS Unity and the 227th flight of White Knight 2 VMS Eve. The company also said, Once data reviews are complete, we will move forward with our testing program, pressing onward with additional glide flights designed to expand our envelope of flight weights and centers of gravity. DJI will be holding an event in New York on May 24th, and there is a lot of speculation that it is to unveil the DJI Spark selfie drone. There have been a number of leaks suggesting that the DJI Spark will be a small, affordable, in the range of $600 drone. Various drone blogs report that there are good indications that the May 24th event will be to finally unveil the drone. About the only thing for sure is the aircraft will be rechargeable via USB ports and the rotors will be removable. Otherwise, little has been revealed about the aircraft. While not being specific, media reports state that invitations have been sent to the media for the May 24th event. While some have speculated that the company may be announcing a Phantom 5 drone, the Phantom 4 Pro is only a few months old. So a new aircraft seems more likely. The only way to know for sure is to stay tuned. After the break, Ericsson emerges from Chapter 11. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Ericsson has successfully emerged from Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, the company announced Monday. The company satisfied the conditions of its confirmed plan of reorganization, which became effective following approximately five months of negotiations and court proceedings. President and CEO Jeff Roberts said, We are very pleased to have completed our financial restructuring in such an efficient and timely manner. Chapter 11 allowed us to achieve rationalization of our aircraft fleet and deliver our balance sheet by over $400 million in debt. We are exiting the restructuring process with significant available liquidity to fund the company's present and future business opportunities. 
As provided in the plan of reorganization, the pre-petition first lien debt was satisfied in full and holders of the company's pre-petition second priority senior secured notes receive new common stock in exchange for their claims. The new ownership is comprised of a diverse shareholder group that includes former bondholders. The company will move forward as a privately held small business effective immediately. As previously announced, Erickson's plan of reorganization was confirmed by order entered by the United States Bankruptcy Court from the Northern District of Texas on March 22nd, 2017. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Arrow Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. The Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International and their Airborne Unmanned production partner, Aero News Network, yes, that's us, are announcing the schedule for the upcoming multi-hour live interview program scheduled for day two and three of Expo 17 set for May 8th through 11th in Dallas, Texas. The broadcast will be conducted, shared, and viewed as a live webcast. On Tuesday, May 9th, Live Expo 17 webcasting will commence at 12 o'clock p.m. Central Time and continue until at least 3 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Numerous guests and experts from throughout the unmanned technology world will be featured. On Wednesday, May 10th, live webcasting will resume at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time and continue through 1 o'clock p.m., offering even more features and interviews live from the floor of Exponential 2017. The live stream can be accessed via www.airborne-live.net. And embed codes that allow for the featuring of the live stream on remote websites is available on the main page. We look forward to seeing you all there. After these messages, Da'er Scholarship Interns Named. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We our Hartzell Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne's C-Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax Power and Garmin G3X Touch Avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit C-Ray.com for more details. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Michelle Peterson of Madison, Wisconsin, and Nathaniel Graham of Centennial, Colorado will receive internships of a lifetime as recipients of this year's EAA.Air International Scholarships. Each recipient receives a five-week internship at Dair's Tarbes facility in France. Located in the shadow of the Pyrenees Mountains, followed by a week to the EAA Air Academy in Oshkosh. The GAO reports that the first launch of NASA's SLS rocket will likely not happen until sometime in 2019 due to technical challenges. The report says that NASA's three human exploration programs, Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, Space Launch System, and Exploration Ground Systems are making progress on their respective systems, but the EM-1 launch date is likely unachievable. A private airplane with actor Charlie Sheen on board en route from Mexico to Los Angeles, California, was required to land for a drug inspection. But customs agents came up empty. Landing at Brownfield, as instructed, the plane was searched. All baggage was inspected. While a dog did alert on one of the bags, it did not contain any illegal narcotics. Boeing is alleging that Bombardier is offering unfair subsidies in pricing on its C-Series airliners and has asked the Department of Commerce to investigate. 
Boeing alleges that Bombardier offered absurdly low prices on C-Series aircraft to win a key order from Delta Airlines. The deal priced the aircraft at $19.6 million each, rather than the stated production costs of $33.2 million. Anna Fisher, a member of NASA's first astronaut class to include women and the first mother in space, has retired. Fisher was a mission specialist on space shuttle mission STS-51A, the second flight of the orbiter Discovery, which launched from Kennedy Space Center on November 8, 1984. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. For space geeks, this could be the ultimate Lego set. The company has released the NASA Apollo Saturn V set that includes command and service modules as well as Lunar Lander. On the Lego blog, the company says the kit was designed by Lego and space fans Felix Steeson and Valerie Roche, who never met while collaborating on the project. Steeson said that the working together in different locations was actually a benefit to the project. When one had to move the project to the back burner for a while, the other would often continue to move it forward. That would often re-energize the other partner. After the design was finished, the project was turned over to Lego designers Michael Siaki and Carl Thomas Miriam, both big space fans who asked to be put on the project. The model stands about three feet high when completed, but it does come with three stands that allow the builder to display it horizontally as well. And next month, it will include three micro-astronaut figures and a booklet about the manned Apollo missions, as well as information about the designers of the kit. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.